What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some ways to quickly add like pipes and duct work to your models in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so last week we talked a little bit about how we can create these like cut components that can cut a hole with a recess inside of a wall. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how you might add like piping and duct work and other things to these walls, right? Because right now this whole thing looks a little bit empty um, and we wanna add a little bit more detail, right? Because I've been basing this at least loosely on this video from Josh Hild over on Pexels, which I can link to in the notes down below. But notice how you've got like some duct work running up the wall. Um, we may eventually get to some of this other stuff as well. Uh, we're going to focus on duct and piping and things like that for this video. But what we wanna do is talk about a few different ways that we can do this. So the easiest way that we can do this is we're just going to draw a line up our wall. And most of what we're doing, by the way, is going to have to do with uh, kind of extruding a shape along a path. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this line in here and then we're going to use the follow me tool in order to generate a pipe. So we can do that by um, I'm gonna move this off the wall just a little bit so this isn't like in the middle of the wall, but we can just draw a circle on the end that's kind of like the diameter of the pipe that we wanna use. And then we can use the follow me tool, which you can find over here in the large tool set in order to extrude this. Now, one thing to be aware of when you do something like this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this pipe, by the way. Um, if people aren't going to be paying a lot of attention to the pipe in your scene, you probably don't need to do this, but you can come in here and just kind of round off your pipes just by drawing an arc in here. So I'm just gonna draw an arc like this and then just double click and notice what that does is that kind of adds that curve in here. Now, one thing I wanna do is I wanna make this a little bit smaller, right? I don't want this to be a massive curve, but now if I select all of these edges like this and then I use the follow me tool, I can use this to extrude this pipe along the path right here. Then I'm just gonna take this whole thing and I'm gonna put it in a group like this. And then you can take it and move it against your wall. Um, one trick that I use a lot of the time is toggling on hidden geometry in here, because then I can see all of these different points and I can just do a little bit better job picking up the furthest point over here to inference this to my wall. So that's a simple way to create a circular pipe. But let's say that we wanted to create something that looked a little bit more like a duct. Right, so a duct isn't gonna be circular, it's going to be rectangular. Now, we can use a very similar process though. So in this case, right, we're gonna draw this line up, we'll draw it over, and we'll draw it up like this. But in this case, instead of using the circular shape, we're gonna use a rectangular shape, right? So all I'm gonna do is just tap the R key. You can tap the control key in order to put this in about center mode, but I'm just going to draw a duct that's going to look something like this. So now I've got that duct work in here. Well, what I can do is I can use the follow me tool in order to extrude this along the surface. Now, this is obviously a very simple rectangle in here, but if you're just looking for some like fast duct work in here, this could be an easy way to do that. And so one thing you could do here is say you wanted to add some like ribs across this surface, right? Um, so what we wanna do is we just wanna add some extrusions in here. So this has a little bit more like joints in here, kind of like real duct work would have. And so the way that we might do that is there's, there's a bunch of different ways that you could do this. But what I might do in this situation is first of all, I'm gonna triple click on it and I'm gonna make it a group, but then I'm going to, um, I'm gonna turn all of my textures off and I'm gonna toggle into X-ray mode. So when I toggle into X-ray mode, I can actually see like the backside of this and it just makes working in here a little easier. But I'm just going to activate the rectangle tool and then tap the R key. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle. And so when I draw that rectangle, what I wanna do is then I wanna offset it out like this, right? So I'm gonna take this and offset it out. You can delete out that extra face in here, but then I'm just gonna push pull this in order to give it a little bit of thickness, right? So now if I toggle back out of X-ray mode like this, notice what I've got in here is I've got this little extra piece of detail. And I would probably make this a component and we can just call this, um, we can just call this duct fin, which it's not really a fin, but um, just from like a definition or a description standpoint, it's probably gonna be okay. But then what you could do is you could just use the move tool in copy mode and just kind of divide this around in here. Then we could do the same thing over here, right? Toggle into x-ray mode, draw a rectangle across, offset it out, and then 
push pull it like this. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make this a component. We're gonna call this a fin. Now, one thing to note about this is when you place this right now, it's gonna be a little challenging because your axes are placed on this external location. Now, if you wanna be able to just kind of drop this in along a duct, what you can do is you can set your component axes in a different location. We can set those component axes right here. That means now when we uh, set this, we're gonna call this duct fin horizontal. But now if I add one of these in here, right? So if I go into the component section of my tray and I looked for my duck fin horizontal, now notice how when I click somewhere along a surface over here and I think I'm in a wall, there we go. So now if I click on a surface, notice how it's going to be aligned with my duct right here and then it's a lot easier to do. So using those component axes to set your insertion point can be a big time saver. But I'm just gonna take this and divide it by like five or something like that. I don't wanna get too crazy with these fins in here, but I just don't want this to look 100% flat, right? So then I could do like a divided by two and we'll call this good. Now you're probably gonna wanna take this whole thing and put it in a group just so that you can edit them all really easily, but then you can take this duct just kind of move it so that it aligns with your wall like this. So now if I toggle out of x-ray mode, now I've got kind of a gray duct on that wall using the follow me tool. And so we could do the exact same thing using this tube right here if we wanted to do something circular, right? So, and I'm gonna go ahead and toggle back into x-ray mode again, but what I can do is I can take this end and I can just copy it down along the surface like this, and I'm gonna tap the up arrow key in order to lock this in, but then I could offset this out like this. So say we wanted like some flanges or something like that. Um, I could just kind of push pull this down like this and use the push pull tool in order to do that. We'll toggle this off for a second. And then I'm just going to take this flange and I'm gonna make it a component. And again, what I might do is I might set my component axes in here so that they're aligned with one of these surfaces to make placement easier. But then we can just call this something like flange and then we can make copies of it. And so then again, I can use the move tool in copy mode in order to create copies in here. Now, one thing that might be helpful to you here is in addition to being able to do this, which you can definitely do, the other thing you could do is you could also use an extension called joint push pull. And so if you use the extension joint push pull, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this down like this. Notice what I'm doing here is I'm, uh, I'm splitting this face up like this, right? So that I've got a surface in here. Well, what joint push pull does, and this is a paid extension from Fredo 6, is this allows you to push pull surfaces. So in this case, right, what I wanna do is I'm going to use the joint push pull function of joint push pull. And when I activate that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to push pull this outward like this. So instead of having to do the extrusion in here like I did before, you can actually use this to push pull those curved faces in order to add detail. So what I might do is I might come in here and split this surface up. I might use joint push pull to push to pull this back in. And we're gonna want to set this to original push pull in here. But notice what that's doing is that's allowing me to push pull this in order to add some additional Detail. So that's just another option for adding some different flanges in here and other detail objects if you want to do that. Okay, so sometimes you want just a little bit more um, quick control over the way that you might add pipes in here. Well, there's a couple extensions you can use that are going to give you that. Like for example, there's an extension that you can download for free from the Sketchication extension warehouse called Pipe Along Path. And so we can run this extension and this one is going to allow us to create a pipe using dimensions, right? So in this case, if I want a four inch pipe, I can just type in four inches. You can also set an actual hollow pipe in here, which if you're doing what we're doing right here, not really that big of a deal, right? But um, you can definitely use this in order to do that if you want that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and click on okay and that's going to quickly generate this pipe right here. So that allows you to do that without having to come in here and draw something that's kind of like centered along this line or anything like that. You can just really quickly generate the path. Now the limitation with that is let's say that we wanted to generate several pipes, right? So I'm going to draw a line up here. We're gonna make a quick set of copies, right? So divided by four or something like that. Well, if we were to select all of these and try to run pipe along path, what this is going to do is it's going to give us an error 
right? It's going to tell us that this is not a continuous path and it's not going to do anything. Well, there's another extension in Sketchication called Lines to Tubes. And so what Lines to Tubes is going to do is it's going to take multiple lines and convert them to tubes. So um, what that's going to do, and this one is also free, and you can download it from Sketchication. And so we can run Lines to Tubes, which actually shows up, uh, should be in the Tools under Convert Arcs circles, uh, curves, lines to cylinders. When I run this one, um, what it's gonna do is it's going to allow me to set the material that's on here, which I just want the default material. I don't know if I'm seeing that in here. We'll just go with this aluminum right here. But this one is going to set this up where either each tube is a group or um, if they're, they just all get put in one group, we can click on OK. We'll notice what that's going to do is that's going to take all of these tubes and it's going to create them at once. So if you want to create like multiple tubes or that would also work for like lattices, you can do that using lines to tubes. Now, let's say you wanted a little bit more automation. All right, so now we're going to take a look at a way that we can actually build an assembly that can build things like our ductwork for us. And so to do this, we're going to use the extension Profile Builder. I've talked about Profile Builder a bunch in the past, but it's basically a tool for building smart profiles in your scenes. And so the way Profile Builder works is you basically build a two-dimensional profile that you can extrude along a path, and then you can use the assemblies function to automatically add things like your ribs on your ductwork. So let's start by creating a profile. So I'm just going to click on this button right here for profile. And what I want to do is I want to create a profile that's going to be similar um, to the one that I've used over here for my ductwork. And what I want to do is I want to select this surface and click on this button right here. And we're just going to call this duct. And so when I do that, now I've created a profile that I can use in order to add ductwork. Right, And so you can use this either to individually add these or um, if I was to do kind of the same thing where I had a path like this, we could select our path and it would extrude this along that path, right? Pretty similar to what we have over here. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to adjust this so that the insertion point is on the corner, right? So what I can do is I can select, um, we probably want the bottom left right here. So that way, this will now place that ductwork based on that bottom left corner. And in this case, uh, maybe we want bottom right. There we go. So now it's going to place this ductwork in the proper location. Um, so I can now use this to add ductwork along paths. But what I want to do is I want to create an assembly that is not only going to extrude this along the path, but it'll also add this additional detail. So what I want to do is I want to get out of the profile dialog and into the assembly dialog. And so the assembly dialog is what you can use in order to add or put these different parts together. So in this case, I want to add that profile member that we just talked about, or we can just say pick from model. And so if we pick it in the model, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we actually have a copy of that profile in the model. But then we just click on the pick for model, we just add that duct to this profile. Well, in this situation, remember what we did over here is we generated these little ribs, right? Well, I want to do the same thing on top of this profile right here. So what I can do is I can come in here and I can just add the ribs as a component. So I'm just going to push pull this a little bit. We'll triple click on it and we'll make it a component and we'll call it rib. And again, I'm going to set my component axes right here. I'm going to click on create. But what I want to do is I want to tell this to add that component at a certain distance. So I'm going to click on add component. We're going to click on pick from model and we're going to select this rib right here. And one of the things I like to do when I'm creating these assemblies is I like to actually put one in my scene so I can see what it's doing. So notice what it's doing is it's generating the ductwork with those ribs in here, but they need to be rotated. So what I can do is I can just select the rotation of 90 degrees. And you can kind of see that update in here. But I can also see that in this scene by clicking on this button right here and then clicking on the button for apply assembly attributes. And so notice what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and every um, eight feet, it's going to add a rib on this ductwork like this. And so let's go ahead and let's draw 
the rest of this path in here and take a look at what that does. So I'm just going to draw this ductwork as if it's going to go up my wall like this, or I'm gonna draw the path like it's gonna go up my wall. Whoops. And I wanna make sure that I'm staying on the proper surface here. But now if I come in here and I select this, I wanna get the whole path, and I click on this button right here, what it's gonna do is it's going to create that assembly like this. All right, and so if we take a look at this, when we do that, notice how we run into some issues, right? And the issue is that these are um, not following along with our ductwork right here, right? So in order to fix that, what we need to do is we need to uncheck this box for horizontal because what it's doing is it's kind of locking these in and it's not letting them rotate so that they can follow along with this path. So if I uncheck horizontal, I'm gonna check the box right here. Notice how now this actually creates those ductwork pieces in here um, and it lets them rotate to follow along with this object. So now it's kind of automatically adding these in here. Well, the other thing we want to do is notice how at a couple of these junctions, it starts getting a little weird, right? Where this like changes direction. Well, what we can do is we can go into our junction setback and set this to like negative two feet or something like that. What that means is that means that every time there's a junction, it's just going to set everything back by two feet. So what it's doing is it's keeping these out of those junctions, which are kind of like breaking this. Um, the other thing we could do, because it's putting one of these at the very start and probably at the very end, we're just gonna set our start setback to something like 12 inches. We may do the same thing on the end, and then we're going to update this again. But notice how now we've got this tool in here that can automatically add that ductwork and it's gonna automatically add um, those, it's going to automatically add those ribs in here as well. And if we do it on the end of our building, we may need to rotate it like this. Um, again, not that big of a deal, but you could do the same thing with piping and fixtures on here. So um, you could create one of these that actually automatically generates the pipe in here as well. All right, so that's kind of an overview of the way that you can add the piping and duct work into your scenes. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have a way to do this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.